In this video, I want to take a look at some properties of derivatives of vector valued functions. And these properties are pretty much everything you could hope for. That is, you have ways that you think you know how derivatives work for regular functions. Well, they work the same way for um, vector valued functions. So here we go. This first one, it says that if you take your vector function, multiply it by a constant and then take the derivative that's equivalent to taking the derivative first of the vector function and then multiplying the result by the constant so the derivative of a constant times vector function is the constant times the derivative of the vector function uh, this is the scalar multiple rule sometimes it's called homogeneity the homogeneity property uh, this next one either take it with just the plus signs or take it with the minus signs let's think about the plus signs the derivative of the sum of two vector functions is the sum of the two derivatives of the vector functions. So you can either add the functions first and then take the derivative, or you can take the derivatives first and then add the results. Likewise with minus signs in there, if you subtract the two vector functions and then take the derivative, that's equivalent to taking the derivatives first and subtracting the results. Uh, they call that the sum of difference. This is also sometimes called the additivity property. And if you have the homogeneity property and the additivity property, then this is what we would call a linear operator. Uh, those of you who've had some linear algebra might recognize that term. Those of you who haven't had linear algebra, well, you'll see it when you get to linear algebra. Uh, there's a lot of nice things you can say about operators that have these two properties. There's a lot of really nice things. We call them linear anyway. Now, uh, so that's the sum and difference multiplying by a constant. Um, how about if you multiply a couple of things together? So if you multiply a vector function times a scalar function, okay, so for each value of t, f of t is just giving you a number, but each value of t, u is giving you a vector. So then this, that number times the vector, that's just scalar multiplication there. If you take the derivative of that, it turns out it's equivalent to and boy, this looks just like a product rule. The derivative of f times the vector function u plus f times the derivative of the vector function u. Derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. This is like a scalar product rule, right? Then you have a dot product. What if you have a, a vector function dotted with another vector function? How do you take the derivative of that? Well, it turns out that there is a product rule for dot products and it looks just like a product rule that it's the derivative of the first one dotted with the second plus the first dotted with the derivative of the second okay notice the dot product is commutative so it doesn't matter what order you write these in um, but the next one you got to be real careful because here's a derivative rule for cross products which looks just like you'd hope it would uh, the derivative of the cross product of r and u is the derivative of r crossed with u plus r crossed with the derivative of u. Notice the cross product is not commutative, so you've got to keep things on the same side. The r was to the left, the u was to the right, so every time you see it here, r is to the left, u is to the right, r is to the left, u is to the right. So that's a product rule, but for cross products. Uh, number, what is this? IV, how's your Roman numerals? Must be number six. Uh, this, is a, this is a chain rule, right? So f of t is a real valued function. So t is a real value, you plug it in, you get a real value out of f, and then you plug that into r, and you get a vector out of that. So if you're taking the derivative of that composition of a vector valued function with a real valued function inside, then it looks just like you would expect. Take the derivative of the vector valued function, leaving the stuff inside alone, but then multiply by the derivative of what's inside. This looks just like the chain rule from before. I should point out here that I don't really like the way they write this because they make it look like a dot product. This is not a dot product because this is not a vector function. This should actually be written as f prime of t times r prime of f of t, right? That this is the vector function r prime of whatever is a vector function and then that's being multiplied by the scalar right so this is not a dot product this thing the scalars are usually written out in front okay so be careful with that one uh, the, the way it's written is uh, slightly misleading and lastly
if you've got a vector function that when you dot it with your cell with itself equals a constant then the dot product of the vector with its derivative is always equal to zero it means they're orthogonal to each other i think that one bears some looking at let's let's spend a moment and look at that we are given that r of t dotted with r of t is a constant and what I want to do now is I want to essentially implicitly differentiate. I'm going to take the derivative of the left-hand side with respect to t. And that should equal the derivative of the right-hand side with respect to t. Well, the right-hand side is easy enough to do because that's the derivative of a constant. That's, you know, calc 1. It hasn't changed. It's still 0. Uh, but now I've got the derivative of this dot product. Well, one of the rules that we just had is that there's a product rule, just like you would expect a product rule for regular functions. So it's going to be uh, the first one, r of t times the derivative of the second, plus the derivative of the first times the second. And these are all vector value functions. Oops. And there's a dot products in between. And these are, you're dotting those two things together because that's what you had here to begin with was dotting. Now, notice that uh, dot products are commutative. So the first one here and the second one are the same. So this is r of t dotted with r prime of t plus, same thing, r of t dotted with r prime of t. That's equal to zero. But now these are the same and you're adding them up. So that's two times r of t dotted with r prime of t equals zero and you can divide both sides by two there we go you got r of t dotted with r prime of t equals zero now think about this situation r prime dotted with sorry r dotted with r we had from before that if you had a vector and you dotted it with itself that's the same thing as taking the length of the vector and squaring it. So if the length squared of the vector is constant, then the length of that vector is constant. So this statement right here is equivalent to saying that the length of this vector is a constant. Well, Think about how you could make a parametric curve where you're always having the same length vector, right? And you're measuring length from the origin. So once you know that one of the vectors is, say, this far away from the origin, then every other vector on that curve defined by R of t has got to be on the circle centered at the origin of whatever radius that is. So it might not be the whole circle, but it's always on the circle. And remember, too, that we saw that the derivative, whoops, what happened to my derivative here? This was r prime, sorry, r prime, r prime, that the derivative vector was always a tangent vector to the parametric curve. And so if the, if the vector function itself is always on the circle, then the derivative vector is always going to be Par uh, sorry, tangent to that circle, well, sure, the radius of a circle and a tangent line at that point will always be perpendicular to each other. And so this dot product will have to equal zero. So anyway, when you're working with these vector functions and taking derivatives and whatnot, uh, as we'll be doing over the next couple of weeks, um, keep in mind all the derivative rules that you had from Calc 1 apply here. Slightly different in look because, you know, you're not just multiplying two real functions together, you're multiplying two vector functions together, as is in you're multiplying with a dot product or a cross product, or you're multiplying a, uh, a real function with a vector function uh, as scalar multiplication. But still, the rule for taking the derivative of such a combination is the product rule as you would expect it to be. Okay, So all those rules, uh, all those properties right here are just essentially saying you're going to work with these derivatives 
just as you would expect to do them from Calc 1. So anyway, um, you should try a bunch of these uh, in the homework and uh, of course ask your questions in the discussions.